So it was recognized in um, watching our presentation. Uh, we, have a, we have a typo in our presentation. Um, I've talked about um, these numbers on the slide are correct overall, with the exception of this sulfate total in, for the 20 year total. Um, that number should be 27.6 million kilograms. Still a huge number, but it's not billion. the band is left out of their full effect letter or mischaracterized in their presentations yesterday. The understanding of these details is what led the agencies to the issuance of our permits. However, the agencies didn't just rely on the science and our modeling. I'm now going to talk through the monitoring required by our environmental permits, the annual analyses and verification evaluations that we're required to do, and the adaptive management and mitigation laid out in our permits. This slide shows our extensive, comprehensive water and wetland monitoring required as a result of our North Met permits. This compilation of monitoring required is from our two NPDS permits, our consent decree, our 401 water quality certification, our 404 permit, our Wetland Conservation Act decision, and our permit to mine. This includes back up, stream water quality, stream flow, groundwater quality and groundwater levels, wetland hydrology, wetland vegetation, wetland water quality, industrial water collection, treated water discharge, and macro invertebrate and fish monitoring that we're required to do. 280 monitoring locations in total. Many of these have been underway throughout the environmental review process, but there's a number of these that are new monitoring locations that have started once our permits were issued. For example, we have 16 years of wetland hydrology data. This creates a robust data set to evaluate potential project impacts from baseline conditions. We're not aware of any other mine that has a monitoring program as robust as this. Now let's focus in on the mercury monitoring, so that's, since that's what's most important in the presentations yesterday and today. We are and will be monitoring mercury at 66 different locations around our project site, in stream water quality, in wetland water quality, in industrial water collection, and in our treated water discharge. The MPCA required monitoring to confirm the expected outcomes of our cross-media work and to ensure the ability to perform adaptive management if changes were found that were attributable to the project. This mercury monitoring is compiled from our two NPDS permits, our 401 water quality certification, and our permit to mine. The band has contended that there's not enough monitoring to detect harm. This slide and the prior slide showing our 280 monitoring locations shows that that claim is incorrect. In addition to monitoring, the agencies also, required, also included numerous permit conditions that require annual review of our monitoring results. Many of these analyses are listed on this slide or required to perform an annual potential indirect wetland impact assessment to evaluate wetland water levels and vegetation. This is from our 404 permit, our 401 water quality certification, and our Wetland Conservation Act decision. We're required to do an annual evaluation of stream and wetland of interest water quality monitoring data to evaluate against our baseline conditions and our cross-media analysis results and predictions based on our 401 water quality certification conditions. We're required to do an annual groundwater evaluation to assess monitoring results, the suitability of our monitoring network, spatial distribution of our groundwater quality, and potential for north flow at the mine site according to our NPDS permit conditions. Our NPDS 
conditions also require us to do an annual comprehensive performance evaluation to assess the performance of our engineering controls and our monitoring network. And we also have many other um, annual reviews that we're required to do for our permit to mine and our water appropriation permit that I won't get into today. Additionally, once our monitoring results have been analyzed, we're also required by permit conditions to perform an annual verification, modeling, and evaluation. In this annual assessment, we'll be assessing the predictions of our water quality and quantity and comparing them to the actual observed monitoring data. We'll be verifying previously predicted long-term impacts from our EIS and permitting by rerunning our water models with the actual observed data from the monitoring. We're required to determine if changes are needed to remedy unacceptable impacts that might be recognized in, those, um, in the rerunning of our water models or in the monitoring data itself, and implement our adaptive management contingency mitigations that we've already laid out. And every five years, we're required to reevaluate, rerun our underlying conceptual models, such as our MOPSL model. This is required by our permit to mine, our NPDES permit, and our water appropriation permits. Now let's talk about adaptive management mitigation because it doesn't appear that that was well understood by the band based on the, the discussion yesterday. Polymath proposed an adaptive management approach. Adaptive engineering controls can, can change as a result of monitoring or monitoring data, or modeling data. Our water treatment plant is an example of an engineering control. It's designed to be modular, so if we're seeing higher flows or higher loads, we can add additional units to it um, to be able to expand the engineering control and make sure that we're meeting our permit conditions or our requirements. Additionally, contingency mitigations have already been laid out in our permitting documents and could be enacted if, if required. Every one of our major permits includes adaptive management processes and mitigation measures to evaluate and consider. For example, the 404 permit states that when changes are recognized, monitoring reports shall include recommendations for appropriate steps to respond to the documented changes to include additional monitoring, adaptive management, and or compensatory mitigation. Note that it says when changes are recognized, not when permit violations are made. So this is required in addition to our 404 permit by our 401 certification, our NPDES permit, our permit to mine, our Wetland Conservation Act decision, and our water appropriation permit. So to wrap up, our project will not affect the quality of BANS waters so as to violate any of the BANS water quality requirements. In summary, our project will reduce sulfate and mercury loading and specific conductance in the St. Louis River. This statement was true from the EIS, as well as the additional analyses completed for permitting. The band needs to show that both the EIS and the permitting documents were wrong. 15 years worth of analyses to show a violation of their water quality standards. They have not so far. Speculation is not enough to show a violation of a water quality standard. There are adequate controls in place, both in project design and as permit requirements, to ensure that the project will not cause or contribute to a violation of water quality standards for sulfate, mercury, methylmercury, or specific conductance, or any other water quality standard at the Fond du Lac Reservation in the lower St. Louis River, 116 river miles away. The agencies didn't just rely on the science or our modeling that they reviewed and approved. They put into effect, we have over 7,000 permit conditions that we need to comply with, including comprehensive monitoring, annual verification modeling and evaluation, adaptive management, and contingency and required mitigations. Our project reuses existing infrastructure, bringing the site up to modern standards and cleaning up legacy issues in the process, including cleaning up the Embarrass River, the Partridge River, and the St. Louis River as a result of past mining disturbances that have occurred on our site. 
Currently, we're the only discharge in Minnesota that's required to meet the wild rice standard at the end of our pipe, which will result in a significant reduction in sulfate in the St. Louis River. This project is for the betterment of these streams, including the betterment of the St. Louis River and water quality at the Vans Reservation. Regardless, 116 river miles downstream is a long way, as I mentioned earlier. And although the Embarrass River and the Partridge River will clearly show this cleanup, it will be mostly undetected in the St. Louis River at Forbes and at Fond du Lac because our flow is less than 1% of the flow at the Fond du Lac Reservation. Polymet will produce metals that are essential for the U.S. sustainability and energy goals and will be one of the only sources of nickel and cobalt, which are essential to battery storage. Our project has gone through extensive joint state and federal environmental review and permitting processes with unprecedented community and, and tribal involvement. Fond du Lac and the EPA were both cooperating agencies for the, for the supplemental EIS and for the final EIS. And what wasn't mentioned yesterday was that although we did get a failing grade on an earlier version of our EIS, our draft EIS, we went back to the drawing board. We did a supplemental EIS completely changing our project, including adding the requirement for the 10 milligram per liter sulfate standard. And as a result, the EPA gave our supplemental draft EIS an EC2 rating, which is the highest rating a mining company has ever gotten in the US. And lastly, our project meets the definition of responsible domestic mining called for in the Presidential Decree on the Defense Production Act. I thank you for allowing us the opportunity to present the full story on our project. Thank you, Christy, and thank you to, to you, Steve, Cliff, and Greg for your presentations. Greg, I'll make a note that our YouTube recording um, cut out at the uh, period of your summary slide. However, we have a backup recording and a backup to the backup recording and a transcript. Uh, so we'll be sure to capture uh, that portion. So now we'll take our recess until 1230. Um, I assume both parties will uh, move to your breakout rooms when uh, lunch is uh, served. We'll make sure to let you know so you can update that. See you back here at 1230.